Let's do let's do a thing. Let's shoot some stuff. Let's just do some things. <laughs> is it still recording? I hope it is, because <laughs> I'm going full bore. <laughs> What's going on everyone? My name is Talon Sai, and you are watching Sunday Gun Day. I hope you're having a great Sunday so far. Today I'm joined with my friend, Mr. John Patton from the Gun Collective. How's Hi. it going? How are you, man? I'm doing good. I'm pumped. I, I think this is my first Sunday Gun Day video. This is your second or third? No, 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 now. On, the, on the new channel. Oh yeah, welcome to the new channel. Thank you, thank you're, you. You're the I'm first here. guest on the new series I, now. Hey, I was the first guy up here. <laughs> yeah. Yes! You're like the only one so yes. far. <laughs> I requested Genevieve, but we got John. Yeah, so. you know, you know, everybody wants Genevieve. And, <laughs> the real reason I requested uh, John today, though, is because what we're taking a look at, he has some experience, much more experience than I do with this particular product, and we'll get into that more a little bit later. So without further ado, we're going to be taking a look at the new Resonator K from Yankee Hill Machine. The Resonator K is a new 30 caliber can offering from YHM. The idea behind the design was to provide a quiet, lightweight, and cost-effective suppressor that can handle the power of a 308 while still shedding some weight and reducing the footprint. The blast chamber of the Resonator K is threaded to 1 and 3 8 by 24, which allows it to utilize a few mounting options currently on the market. However, this obviously pairs best with a QD mount from YHM. When ordering, you have the choice of going with either their Phantom Muzzle Brake or their Flash Hider like I picked here. These new QD mounts have been revised from previous years, now including things like carbon scraping teeth, which removes carbon from the internal support system of the can. The dual support system aligns the suppressor to the bore of whatever gun you're mounting this on, and the external locking mechanism keeps heat away from the spring mechanism, which ensures a proper fit. Now back to the can, the new end cap design will supposedly help reduce any flash signature from 17 HMR all the way up to 300 Remington Ultramag. It has a length of 4.8 inches or 5.6 including the QD and it comes in at just 9.6 ounces or 12.4 ounces when using the mount. With its tubeless design and heat treated stainless steel internals, the Resonator K is also full auto rated, which I wish we were actually able to test today. So there you guys have some pretty impressive specs for a first look at the Resonator K. The MSRP on this is around 580 and you said you already found one for, what was it? Silencer Shop, when we looked, had it on sale for 440 bucks. 440 bucks <laughs> for a can that is rated up to some crazy loads Rated for full auto as well. I'm really excited to see how this thing is actually going to perform today. Yeah, me too. Uh, we did a test recently with the Turbo, the 556 variant of that, and the Turbo K, and they both did really, really well, and the value is outstanding. So I'm hoping that that just continues on. Yeah, I'm hoping it follows suits. So the reason I brought John is because, first of all, he owns a few different Yankee Hill machine cans. This is just one of them. That's the one that you brought for testing today. Yep as a plane is flying over. He's, he's been there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now that the plane is gone, um, I brought him out because he has this can in particular, which is? This is a full-size resonator. This is the first gen. They've they've kind of updated it to look more like this one with the knurling and the flash, uh, flash hider end cap thing. Uh, but this is a full-size version. You can see there. You know, very, very similar concept, just shorter, less baffles. So we wanted to see, you know, kind of how this would perform in comparison, if uh, the tone is different between the two, if it's good, you know, just really um, just gathering more information for you guys, for ourselves, etc. For sure. So we're gonna throw this on a few different variants of rifles that we brought out with us today. We're gonna try to do it based off of our knowledge, starting with the, what I would assume to be the loudest, and then we'll work our way down, starting with 5.56, and then we're gonna jump into 300 Blackout as well. We have a few different variants of ammo, and I know how you guys typically like suppressor videos. We're gonna have no music for the actual shooting part of this. I will have all the ammo information on screen. What do you mean, you're not gonna play hard rock over top of the shooting? I should, <laughs> and then just a decibel reader. Just oh, only the <laughs> crappy royalty-free stuff. Yeah, the YouTube <laughs> audio library. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is what you guys 
guys are gonna get and you can make a decision of what you think about these on your own. It's hard to tell through camera, audio, yeah, it really what it sounds like, but we'll kind of chime in with our impressions of it as we go about shooting these. Yeah, let's do, let's do a thing. Let's shoot some stuff. Let's just do some things. <laughs> is it still recording? I hope it is, because <laughs> I'm going full bore. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna be using this gun right here for the control for today. This is a IWI Tavor X95. It has a 16 and a half inch barrel, and right now I'm gonna be testing out the YHM flash hider on the end. For right now, this will probably be the loudest ammo. I'm shooting some 55 grain Frontier from Hornady. So this is uh, kind of a hodgepodge AR that I assembled. Currently has a 16 inch Roscoe barrel in 5.56. We're gonna use the same ammo, the Hornady Frontier stuff with the YHM brake. Hopefully this gun runs. Hope so, we'll see. There we go. flat. Hey, it ran. <laughs> I'm happy about that. All right, guys, so now we're moving into the actual suppressor testing. We're going to start with the Resonator K. Right here, I have John's 10 and a half inch AR-15. Now, what's cool about this, and he just explained to me how they keep the cost low on here, is that they remove a lot of the springs and the QD mechanisms out of the inside of the can, and they actually put it on the end of this flash hider right here. So this thing is actually spring-loaded, and as I slip it over the end of the device, and thread it on, you will hear those grooves in the end start to link up and it will click down, pushing the spring back towards me and then that thing is on there, solid. So now again, we're gonna be shooting some 55 grain. Let's see how this thing sounds. Definitely not quite hearing safe yet, but I just noticed right now that these are little bullets on the side here. Oh, <laughs> I didn't notice that either. Here we go with the Resonator K on the X95. I'm really curious to see if there's a lot of blowback considering the, the exit of the chamber is right here by my face. Let's see how it goes. Honestly, did not notice any blowback at all. And I noticed a significant uh, decrease in the fireball because of the longer barrel, more dwell time. That probably had something to do with it as well. Okay, rad. Uh, I thought that was pretty, uh, pretty comfortable. This is actually a really good can for this setup. Keeps it nice and tiny. Yep. Cool. Now we're moving on to the full size resonator back to the 10 and a half inch Air 15, 5.56 five, sill, shooting 55 grain. Definitely noticed a little more in my face that time I as far as gas goes. Yeah, so that's interesting. But it was not overwhelming. Definitely suppressed that flash a little bit more as well. I didn't see any fire that time. Absolutely more. Yeah. Absolutely. I noticed uh, it coming back a little bit. I, I can smell it more, like, you know, it's. I can see it, I can feel it a little bit more. It's not like unbearable by any means, but there's certainly more. Now we are back to the 10 and a half inch AR Resonator K on here, and we're switching ammo this time to some American Eagle 62 grain. A little bit heavier, in theory a little bit quieter. Felt about the same. So I noticed from back here there's more fire than the uh, the frontier stuff. That's that's a powder thing. It's like a military load versus a non-military load. Volume-wise, it's probably very very similar. A little gas here. I mean, a tiny bit versus the frontier ammo, but not much. I'd say it's a in between the two setups that we've tried. Okay. I definitely. Um, I definitely felt like that ammo was a little bit more stout, for sure. Yeah. 
Now back to the full size resonator on the 10 and a half inch, same green tip ammo. Yeah, there's definitely a noticeable amount of gas increase with the full-size can. Mm -hmm. You definitely notice that. Um, I, I, I feel weird saying this, but I kind of prefer the K. Yeah? All right. All right, now moving on to the 300 Blackout here. I have about an 8-inch barrel AR-15. This is basically a hodgepodge of different things that John put together. We're not even sure if this is actually going to run without a can on here, but we're going to give it a shot. For the beginning of this test, we're gonna be using some Fioki 150 grain. One other thing that's different is that this is now the YHM brake as opposed to the flash hiders on the 5.56. This one will need a can. All right, this is a Remington Model 7 in 300 Blackout, custom painted by Scalpel Arms down in Texas. I'm using some 78 grain, some ultra lightweight, Lehigh Defense uh, 300 Blackout ammo. It's got the YHM break out there. We're gonna see how this does. Woo! They're flying out of there. Man, that is loud. <laughs> Curious to know the velocity of those because it it's it it's seems like stupid high. It's it's really really fast. I've shot these into gel before and they just they're meant to come apart. And boy oh boy do they come apart. <laughs> Back to the eight inch three hundred blackout now with the resonator K on the end here. Still using the same Fioki one hundred and fifty as before. See how it does. Should run a little bit better now. Hopefully. Much more of a pleasure to shoot, that's for sure. Uh, I'm not sure about hearing safe, but it's definitely a hell of a lot quieter. Gases were also not that bad, and it helped the gun run better, so that's a win. All right, here we go with the Resonator K on this tiny little setup with the 78 grain ammo. Wow. That's almost hearing safe, I wow. think. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. Whoa, dude. Dude, this is like the ultimate like deer hunting setup right here. That ammo, like it sounded pretty quiet to me. Yeah, ear, ears off. That was actually pretty manageable. Wow. That's impressive. All right. So moving on to the full size resonator on the small 300 blackout. Same 150 green. Uh, a little bit. It's, it's over here. It's not bad. Not bad. I'm like 10 feet away. Okay, right here on the gun, it's a little bit. A little it's bit a loud. little bit high pitched yeah. coming out of the gun, but and keep in mind that I'm pretty particular about protecting my hearing because of how much I shoot. I'm sure you're the same way. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is that is like it's definitely cruising, but like back here, totally good. Ooh, that one sounded. That was a rock. Oh, he hit, he hit a rock. Yeah, I hit a rock. Yeah, it's it's getting into the dirt and just cracking rocks and stuff. For the record, we checked the box and the rating on that 78 grain bullet is 2,800 feet per second. Like closing in on 5.56 five, territory. Now for the part that I've been waiting for, Resonator K with some subsonic ammo. Right now we're gonna be shooting some TA targets, 220 grain, 300 blackout. This should sound pretty damn quiet. That's got some thump to it, man. It's nice and bassy. Yeah. Like you could rip rip through a bunch of rounds like that, no problem. So my problem with the last round was that it was really high pitch, but with those oh, rounds, that is 
sounds fine to my ear. That reminds me, that tone on that reminds me of that sound when you pop an air hose off a quick connect. Yeah, that is what that it sounds, sounds like. like. Yeah. yeah. Okay, 220 grain subsonic with the Resonator K out of a 16 inch bolt gun. We'll see. I'm curious to know if this will go supersonic in this slightly longer barrel. We'll see. Definitely not. No. <laughs> The ejection on this thing is piss poor. I'm gonna hit a piece of steel. Wow, that steel's loud. That's context. <laughs> That's context for you. That one went supersonic. You could hear it. I thought it might have been the rock. Oh, that's true. It could have been a rock. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. It's probably a rock. You can definitely, there's definitely a tone difference, but it's really quiet. See, that's what I, I, I question whether or not that's going supersonic, because that didn't sound quite like a rock. Keep in mind, we're also kind of in a little bit of a valley, so. It's sure, there's like a echoing. carve out here. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think it's, I think it's right with that longer barrel. I think it's floating right on the edge of being yeah. supersonic. All right, so we've done most of the testing today. Now I want to put this thing back on the X95, the Resonator K on here and shoot it somewhat unconventionally. One thing that's kind of cool about these guns is with these modular handguards here, you can actually slide it out and lock it into place. That way you get more of a like forward purchase on there. I didn't know that. Put it right like that and now you can kind of grip up on the gun a little bit more. Huh which is kind of neat. That is neat. So not only is this gun very unconventional, it looks pretty cool now actually with this whole setup, but the ammo. I've shot this in a previous suppressor video. This is Atomic Tactically Cycling 112 grain 5.56. Twice the weight. <laughs> Twice the weight of a typical 5.56 round. Here, I'll let you do the honors actually. All right, that sounds fun. I'm Thank curious you. to see if it will run and to see what it will sound like as well. So okay. I've ran this ammo through two there different Surefire suppressors on a BCM 11 and a half inch and it ran really reliably actually, so. Okay, well Surefire cans, to, in my experience, tend to be a little bit loud for what they are. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how this does in comparison. All right. Okay, so I'm not I'm not gonna say it's not loud because that ejection port, that port pop is right next to my head. Okay. And I didn't I wasn't wearing ear pro. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of loud. The gun runs a lot differently. Like it's it's like slower, you can feel it yeah. running slower. I will say the ejection was spot on, so it seemed to be consistent for sure. Like it's hitting if, me every time. If I didn't have that port pop right next to my ear, that would be a really quiet setup. It, from me standing five feet away was manageable, but I could understand having your ear up against there might yeah. not be. It's still really freaking cool to shoot 112 grain 5.56. Five, yeah. It's a pretty cool round, but they're very expensive as well. Are they really? Yeah. All right, guys, so for some final thoughts on these two cans, I'll let you take it away first. What do you prefer and why? And I know that's kind of a hard thing to ask. So they, they kind of have their own roles, right? Like they're both rated very, very high in terms of what calibers they can take. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Significant value. I gotta say though, for for my money, if I'm looking for something that's kind of fun and typically with a can, that's what I'm doing, I'm going with the K. That's, that's the one I'm leaning on. Although this is technically quieter, mm -hmm. I like the tone of the K a little bit better. I think this is a very good can and delivers a significant amount of value for what it is, mm -hmm. but I just, Every time we shot that, I tended to really enjoy that on the setups that we tried. I think I agree too. Um, one thing that we were talking about off camera, when I'm looking at suppressors, what I'm looking for is of course value, how it's gonna sound, the tone, and of course how it's going to suppress whatever round you choose to shoot. Is it going to be reliable? And then probably one of the most important things to me is the size. I don't know if you're the same way. A lot of people who I talk to are though. 
when I'm looking at purchasing a can, I want that can for a very specific reason. I want it to live on one specific gun, and for the most part, I can leave it there. Sure. So I don't know if this will stay on here. I think this is a pretty cool platform. The X95 is already fairly small, so having that short can on there performed great, great value and everything. And the blowback with that 30 caliber can is pretty cool too. Like there wasn't a ton on that K version. Right. Um, so on that setup, I think that's ideal. Like of all the guns we tested today, you know, Obviously, you know, this is this is mine, so unfortunately your can can't live on it, but um, I think this is a great setup. I think, I think that's really cool. One other thing too to keep in mind is that if you are only purchasing one suppressor, the QD system on here is actually really nice. I am a fan of this. I've never used it before, obviously. However, if you are preferring a brake over a flash hider or vice versa, you can have them on a few different guns and you can easily swap a 30 cal can to 5.56 to 308 to 300 blackout and it's kind of a do-it-all sort of setup yeah and the the thing with YHM is they make sure that you cannot put a 556 can on a 30 caliber brake because I've tried and you can't do it um, <laughs> tried on accident or tried on purpose I tried on purpose because <laughs> okay. they said it was the, they said it was it wouldn't work I was like well, let's find out if that's true that's good and um, I think being able to throw one of their muzzle devices on any gun and throw the 30 caliber can on theirs. I mean, that's that's big value. And the fact that it's $440. Can't really go wrong with that. I mean, you know, how many times are we looking at 30 caliber cans and they're a thousand dollars? Well, you know, anywhere from like eight to a thousand seems to be fairly standard with 30 caliber, like good, you know, ultra durable yeah. 30 caliber cans. And this is half. And you're getting a muzzle device with it as well. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Some right. of those options that are $1,000 are direct threat. So a lot of cool stuff coming from YHM. I think that's all that I got for now. Yeah, I love what they do. And uh, I think they're great. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, dude. Well, thanks for coming out. If you guys don't know John, you're probably new to my channel as well. So consider clicking subscribe on my channel, but also check him out. I'll leave some links to his videos of the factory tour and maybe your reviews of their other cans as well. You can find all of that information in the description down below. And that's all that I have for today. So again, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking subscribe. I make new videos every week. Do you? I do, every single week. I should subscribe. You should. I'm already subscribed <laughs> to you. I'm, I'm also subscribed. Okay. Just check I, I will. I will send you a screenshot. You promoted this channel after I had to start it because YouTube. YouTube. Damn it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. <laughs> we'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.